Here we go, guys. So, question eight, the final question of the paper. Now, it tells us that a figure four shows a sketch of part of the curve C with parametric equations given by the following. Okay? The point um, P at K8 lies on C, which is the curve, where K is a constant. So, first things first, figure four looks a bit like this. So, here is your curve C. And we can see the point P at K8 is over here. So, when X equals K and Y equals 8. I just copied it down here just to make it clearer. Now, what can we do here? So, my advice when trying to find the values of k is to actually look at the parameter equation and just plug in what you know and then work from there. Okay? So, let's do it. So, we can say straight away that when k is 8, this entire equation, um, sorry, when x is k, this equation reduces to uh, k equals 3 theta sine theta. So, so far, we can't really do much of this, unfortunately. So we'll leave it like that. The second part is this. We have y equals sec cubed theta. So we can place the second, replace y with the value of 8. And we should get exactly 8 equals. And instead of sec um, cubed, I'll convert this to 1 over cos cubed. Because uh, cos is the inverse of sec. So something like this. Cos cubed theta. And I'll just rewrite this to make cos cubed the subject. So we can have cos cubed theta. So, so take the reciprocal above. You should get this cos cube equals 1 over 8 and now to, to find cos theta on its own to isolate it you can just um, cube root it and you should get cos theta equals a half all right so so far so good now there's two ways of approaching this you could look at both equations and say hey we could use some trig identities yeah well actually you can you see the very first equation we looked at over here we can make sine theta the subject here and by doing that we can divide 3 theta across. Could work, but then you'll realize that we'll still have a theta in the equation. So alternatively, the best way to go about this would be to actually find the value theta directly and plug in to find k. Okay, so using your calculator, finding the cos inverse of half, and remember, put into radial mode, you should get pi over 3. So, so far, so good. Technically, you could just literally plug everything in and get the answer, which... You know, I'll go ahead and do that. Another way you could do is find the value sine theta directly by using the sine squared plus cos squared method. And doing so, you should get sine theta to wound up as root 3 over 2. So just, just to recap, we're using this identity here. Okay? The classic identity. And plugging in half over here and rearranging to make sine theta, you should get this. So yeah, all in all, by putting all these values out there, it should tell us now that k equals 3 times theta, which is pi over 3, times sine theta, which is um, root 3 over 2. Tidying this up, and to find the exact value, the 3s here cancel out, so you're left with root 3 over 2 times pi. And that's it, guys. That's part A done. Okay, so the final region R, shown shaded in figure 4, so it's talking about this region right here is bounded by the curve C, as we can see over here. The y-axis and the x-axis, and the line with equation x equals k. All right, show that the area of R can be represented in this kind of form. Whew. So it looks quite frightening, but actually it's quite easy, where each of these components are constant. So we've got lambda here, and so on, and the, we've got the two limits. Notice how the entire equation is, is in theta, so that's going to be our final form. Now, the first thing we need to realize is that this is a graph of x and y. So, to find the area under the curve, it's always going to look a bit like this. The area is always going to be in this form. The integral from um, some limits, let's say a and b, of y dx. This is the standard, you know, general area form. So, we're going to begin with this. Okay, let's write it down here. So, we've got a, b, y, this is the region r, uh, dx. Now, as you can see, we just need to start replacing components. And remember, a and b are x values, yeah? So, let's have a look. So, from a quantile graph, we can see that the x limits are 0 and k. And we found out that k was root 3 over 2. So, let's put it here. So, so far, we got when x equals 0 limit, x equals root 3 over 2. We know our y value. Our y value is given in the previous problem. It's, it's actually set cube theta. So, plug that in sec cube theta and we still got dx so not so bad so our objective really is to replace x equals zero 
x equals root 3 over 2, or your root 3 over 2 pi, almost got that off, and dx. To do this, we need to go back to our x equations now. So let's have a look at x. Where's x? So x equals 3 theta sine theta. So now, the first thing we're going to do is say let x equals 0 and solve this one, and then let x equals root 3 over 2 pi and solve it. So let's do it. So we can say straight away, when x equals 0, the equation reduces to uh, 3 theta sine theta equals 0. Now clearly, this means that either 3 theta must be 0 or sine theta must be 0. And either way, when you solve this, they both give you 0. So that's our first limit done. x equals 0 becomes theta equals 0. Now for the second case, when x equals the k value, which was root 3 over 2 pi, the equation becomes 3 sine theta times sine theta equals uh, root 3 over 2 pi. Now, one thing to note here is that this is not easy to solve, but we actually solved it already back in part A. Remember, the only way to find the value k was we had to find value theta ahead of time. And to make this true, we had to choose the value of pi of theta equals pi over 3. So that is the only way to solve this. So therefore, we solved it already. We can instantly say that theta equals pi over 3 to make this statement here true. Okay, that's the only way. So that's three. That's 2 done. Now, how about the final bit, so the dx bit? So we got the limits done. Now we need to replace dx. Well, that's easy. We go back to the original x equation and, well, just differentiate. Find dx over d theta and then rewrite this in terms of make dx subject and replace it into the integral and you're done. So let's do it. So using the, the, the equation x equals uh, 3 theta sine theta, we can say, therefore, dx over d theta is going to be the following. So this is firstly the product rule. So you can assign some variables. Let me just change the color of the pen. Okay. So we can say, let's do it here. We can say let u equal 3 theta and v equal sine theta. Now differentiating u will give us uh, 3. Differentiating sine will give us cos. Now using the product rule, we just, we just cross multiply here. Yeah? So it'll be diagonal multiply. So it'll be v with u prime and u with b prime. So firstly, let's start u. So we have 3 theta times cos theta will give us 3 theta cos theta plus, because it's a product, and 3 times sine theta is 3 sine theta. And now, remember, we want to replace dx. So we need to make dx subject. So we can say dx equals, from the original equation, and factorize in 3, theta cos theta plus sine theta times d theta. And that's it, guys. Plug this back in and you should have a complete equation. Okay, so let me just make room for this on a new page. It might be easier that way. Okay, so let's do it over here. So now rewriting our integral. So firstly, the limits. When x, x equals 0 became um, theta equals 0, we can put 0. And x equals, uh, what was that one? x equals uh, root 3 over 2 pi became pi over 3, so put the limit there. So remember, everything is in terms of theta now, yeah? And we still had sec cube theta, and we have got dx. So let's replace dx and then put this in, because we can see sec squared comes after. So replacing dx, is got, it's going to be all of this, 3 times these lot. And because we've got a constant 3, you can just throw it outside, so that's fine. And now we're going to have um, theta cos theta plus sine theta, and then I could stick the d theta now, but I'll leave it here. And then I'm going to put the previous term, which was already there, sec cube theta. Let me just put in a different color ink. Sec cube theta. And that's it. So this is where we should be now. Now, what we have to do here is realize that the equation they want us is, is in this form. So they kind of simplified, it actually. They got sec squared, so they took out at least one part of the sec from the sec cube. Now, look at this... All right, we'll close inspection. Let's let's go ahead and simplify it. Okay, so we can say that cos theta times sec q theta. And remember, sec cube, in terms of um, cos, cos theta times sec sec cube is one over cos q theta. So you can see you cancel one single cos cube, so you're left with one over cos squared, which is literally sec squared. So that's done. So we're gonna have theta sec squared 
plus, and then same thing, sine times this term. So sine theta times 1 over cos cube theta, because that's sec cube. And you can just partition it. You can take a single cos here, so it would be sine theta over cos theta times 1 over cos squared. And this first term becomes a tan. The second one becomes a sec squared. And we're done. And that's exactly the form they want us to, to keep in. Sec squared theta d theta. And that's it. And then finally, to conclude, we can just say, therefore, wait, where's the question? Therefore, lambda is the constant 3 here. Um, alpha and beta are the limits, 0 and pi over 3. And that's it. That's part B concluded. Now, hence we need to use integration to find the exact value of this area. Okay, so with this kind of integral, you have to realize that Yes, you could factorize sec squared theta outside, but then that'll pose a problem because we won't be able to use substitution to solve it properly. In fact, it would, it would probably be worse. So for me, for my personal advice on this kind of question, you should partition this into two different integrals. I mean, we could discuss this at the bottom, what the best solution was when you guys did it, but this is how I'm going to do it. First, I'm going to label this integral as R1. And then the right side as R2. So I'm going to integrate them separately. So I'll find the integral of theta sec squared theta first. And then the integral of tan theta sec squared theta as R2. And then in the end, I'll add them up and then multiply by 3 to find the actual full region. So let's do it like that. So let's go on to the first one. So here, I say that we need to integrate this by parts. Why? Because um, we have a simple theta here. And you can treat this, imagine this was x. This would be quite easy to differentiate and eliminate it as it would just be 1, it would just become a constant. If you did it by substitution, well, it just wouldn't work. It would be quite complicated. So, let's have a go. So, the first thing we want to do is start labeling terms. So, again, this is easy to differentiate, so I'm going to call this u for our uv integration by parts formula. So, we could say let u equal theta and v prime be the second term. So, now, just a quick note. This one's also easy to integrate. This will give you a, a tan theta because it's, it's, it's the standard definition. So let's have a go. So u prime will give us 1 and then integrating sec squared will give us a nice tan because the derivative of a tan is sec squared. Okay, now easy stuff. So using the bypass formula, what do we have? The bypass tells us that we need to do firstly uv, so these two, minus the integral of these two. So u prime v. Now that means that we're going to have this. So u times v is theta times tan theta. So we'll just draw that in. And don't forget there's limits involved. So it's from pi over 3 to 0 minus the integral of 1 times tan theta, which is like, which is just tan theta. And don't forget we've got limits here as well. Now, so far so good. I mean, the first part is easy to, to solve. We just plug everything in the calculator. If you plug in pi over 3, you should get um, pi over 3 here, and tan theta should be root 3. So ultimately, this should give us um, pi, root 3 pi over 3. If you plug in 0, well, this will cross everything out because 0 times anything is 0. So that's done. Now let's go ahead and integrate this term here. Yeah? So let me just change the color of the pen. So let's see. So if you're not sure how to integrate tan theta, the way I do it is I always rewrite it as uh, the integral of sine theta over cos theta because this is easy to work with. And we can know it's, it's easy because we can just let u be one variable cos and differentiate we should get some sine term and then these two will eliminate and it will become 1 over u or in this case negative 1 over u. Let's check it out. So we can say let u equal the bottom part, always let it be the bottom part here. Yeah? cos theta, and then differentiate this one, we should get negative sine theta, and then, oh yeah, d theta, and then multiply d theta across, it should be uh, minus sine theta, d theta. So, yeah, so now all you have to really do is just pretty much observe it here, and now we just say, okay, in this case, we can just see that we've got sine theta, d theta, we have sine theta, d theta, and that must equal, and just take the negative on the other side, that must equal minus du. Sine theta d theta equals minus du, cos theta is u. So this integral, replacing every term, cos is now 1 over u, because u is at the bottom, and sine d theta is negative du, so minus 
du. And this is pretty much, um, take the negative outside, this is just 1 over u du. Lovely. And then integrating this will give us the natural log, so it would be negative ln u. Alright, and ln u is obviously cos theta, so the final bit will be negative ln uh, cos theta. So let me do it over here, so this would be root 3 pi over 3 minus ln cos theta. And I will just plug in the limits from pi over 3 to 0, only for this bit, yeah? Alright, and then doing that, you should get a final result of all of this should reduce to just simply a log 2. And that's the end of the R1 solution. Okay, here we go. Now, let's integrate this one. So, I call this one R2 because it was the second part of the integral we need to solve. And here we're using the method by substitution. So, let's have a go. So, how do we select which one to, to let, the which, which variable to be u? So, the, the key thing is, is to realize that one of these should differentiate into each other. And if you know your differentiation rules, we should know that tan theta differentiates to become sec squared theta. And that would be perfect, because then that means we can eliminate it all at once. So let's go ahead and do it. So let's say we said let u be represented by tan theta. So differentiating this, du over d theta, this should give us a nice sec squared theta, which is perfect. And then all we have to do is just make the variable sec squared theta d theta. And we can do it here by multiplying d, to, d theta across. We're going to have du equals sec squared theta d theta and here we go all of this clearly equals du so we can replace all of this with du and tan theta is just simply u and yeah it looks it looks to me like we're done isn't it so now our new integral is going to be um u times du and <laughs> this is easy u du is just going to be u squared over 2 and oh yeah don't forget we've got limits as well and then, so yeah, this is going to be, of course, equivalent to um, tan squared theta over 2 with the limits applied. If there was no limits, you would just say plus c. But we clearly got limits here. And we're going to put the limits from pi over 3 to 0. All right, so... And so our final result, after plugging pi over 3, it should give us root 3 squared, so which is just simply 3, so we can get 3 over 2. And a plug in 0, we should get, well, tan theta 0, so 0. So the final result for R2 should be 3 over 2. Yeah, not bad. Now, to finish this off, if you remember carefully, we need to add up both R1, R2, and then multiply by 3 in the end. So let's go ahead and plug everything in. So back in um, for R1, our final result was, actually, you can see, even simplify this further. Root 3 pi over 2 is just pi over root 3. And then the final part is minus log 2. So let's go ahead and put this in. So pi over root 3 minus log 2. So overall r equals 3 times uh, pi over root 3 minus log 2. Plus, now r2 we said was uh, 3 halves. So 3 halves. Yeah, and that's it. Now we just tidy this up and therefore r should give us a nice... Da -da -da, let me think... 3 pi over root 3 minus 3 log 2 plus 9 over 2. I'm not sure how you should simplify further, but I think this should be it. Let me just think. So could you simplify this one? Yes. You can split 3 as root 3 root 3. So that becomes, and these root 3s cancels out. So you should get root 3 pi. So let me see if I can simplify this. So therefore r could also equal root 3 pi. Minus, if you had to put this in a single form, you can raise the power to 3 to 2, so be log 8. But that doesn't really look simplified, does it? Plus 9 over 2. So, I mean, there's various combinations, but yeah, somewhere in this form, and you should be it. But that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video, and um, if you did, let me know how you did. Show me your final results for this question, because I would like to know what you guys also got. And it would help me to provide best solutions for everybody else. Anyways. Hope you guys enjoyed this and have a nice day, yeah? And we shall speak soon. Ciao.